So moving on with the little core segment, we are going to talk now about wallets. Basic guide on wallets for beginners, understanding the difference between a hot wallet and a cold wallet. What is a hot wallet? What is a cold wallet in terms of buy vision, i.e. Binance is a hot wallet. Anything that you put in Binance is not yours. It is held ultimately by the custodian, which is Binance. If you then go on and look at private wallets, likes of Ledger, the likes of Treasure, these are your own keys. I'm going to explain how these work. Now, in my opinion, Ledger by far the best in terms of build, in terms of software, in terms of compatibility through other exchanges and ultimately works very, very well. Now, in terms of the ideology, we'll go over the ideology of what is what. We've already talked about public keys. It's your address. So you have a public key that would allow you to send something to somewhere. So like what we've done in the previous lesson videos, when you go back through this playlist is simple. Whenever you put that Bitcoin address and you know, you send something into that, that is your public key. However, to access those funds, you need a private key to basically tell you, yes, three bags full, sir, this is your wallet. Now, when you look at this, you have a weird random code. It's a mathematical equation that is synced to that wallet. With that, you need that at all times. The biggest worry in life is losing that. So when you've got a wallet, you will always, say for example, a ledger, a Trezor, or any hardware wallet, they're usually encrypted inside, you never see the key. You've got to do other things on the device to basically make sure it's you, and that makes it easy. Old school, when I first started out, these weren't around, okay? You had to copy and paste, you have to submit files over, and have all kinds of weird and funky stuff all, all around you to kind of get access to wallets. It was quite scary having to put your computer offline to then copy a code and then put it into a browser offline to get access to your wallet. That's what it was. It's not like that these days, luckily. It's a lot, it's moved on a bit since then. So with all this, this is interesting. It is pretty geeky. So whenever you open a wallet on a third party, you are gonna get certain things. You're gonna get one or two things thrown at you. One will be a seed phrase, it'll be a 12, or a 24 phrase key, which will be the identifier to that wallet. So with a ledger, you get like a piece of paper and you write out what it tells you. When you then go to refresh that or you need to recover that, you can put in the said sequence. It will give you basically a lot of sequences and you match it up with those numbers. So it will be words like, you know, curious, internet, swimming pool, for example. You know, random words that you just are random, like camera, footage, speaker, football, you know, random words, right? And those are there to back up those private keys. It sounds weird if you've never done it before, but when you get a wallet, you'll see very, very quickly. So we'll go through Ledger first. It's easy to go through Ledger because I know it. Again, private wallets, they're all good. And in terms of products, you've got multiple different ones. The best one is the X because it has bigger data. I have two of these and I have one of these, okay? So in terms of how it looks, how it works, it's very straightforward. Like you, you cannot go wrong with them. Um, really are quite cool. They really, really, really are good fun as well to use in terms of just simplicity. And it is an encrypted private key, okay? You've obviously got Ledger Live as well, which is a good software. But the biggest fundamental draw with all this is obviously the size of it. It's quite little, don't lose it, <laughs> which is the only thing. But for me, I love it. In terms of how it works though, just to kind of go through some of the guides and I'll try and go through, if I can find it, I'm not 100% sure where it is. There's like a support guide somewhere. I've probably completely missed it to be honest with you. But overall, when you look at like Ledger Live, for example, it will tell you exactly what you need to do on the screen, especially on mobile, even on the likes of the computer. It's very, very easy. It's very, very simple. In terms of understanding where the supported cryptos are, it tells you here. So what you do here, you go to supported cryptos. And if you want to write in what you want, you can. Some stuff is on Ledger Live, some stuff is not. So as you can see here, Polkadot, for example, is not on Ledger Live, but you can get it on their wallet. 
with that you can use your ledger to encrypt it okay simple as that so some of them you can some of them you can't again magnum wallet and binance you know you got obviously these ones you can cardano you use it on these wallets so when you click on this it will send you to these wallets and then you can learn how to use them they're very very straightforward i'm not going to lie to you they are very very simple this one's one of the easiest um really really simple but when you open up these wallets you are syncing your ledger to it and it is the encryption for that wallet so that is your wallet and then it'll be encryption keys are not held or, or keys are held on the wallet but the coins are not they're on third party wallets which is basically just access points to the blockchain other things to mention as well obviously if you've got like like a neo a neo wallet again if you want to make a new wallet it'll tell you exactly what you need to do you first thing first you put in a in a password and then so say for example if i wanted to put in say i don't know a random password and i wanted to create a wallet right now it'll spit a load of stuff out at me so save your key store so you download that key store which you can easily just do and you go continue this is your private key okay you never ever lose this which is scary so you obviously you basically print off that your address your public key and then obviously you know the scariest thing is your private key and then from there on you continue and you've just opened a wallet so that is the old school way of doing it when you've got this with a ledger for example and you can do this with a ledger as well um you can hook it up with a ledger so it keeps all of it private every wallet is different though not just on the neo i'm not 100 sure how the neo side of it works but if you wanted to just you know that's a random wallet i'm never ever going to use it's just one of those things this is the only thing you you literally use in that and if you had a i'm pretty sure let me just double check and make sure because i'm not sure if you can hook that up with a ledger i'm not 100 percent sure to be honest with you close wallet goodbye so you can obviously close it straightforward but i'm not 100 percent sure in terms of ledger kind of elements to that not really a neo fan to be fair anyways moving on these are other wallets as well the likes of uh my Ether wallet as you can see here mu really really good syncs to all your erc20 tokens so your ethereum led tokens and yeah it keeps it very very straightforward if you then go into the likes of getting started um you can see how it all works in terms of everything so it tells you recovery pins so make sure you've got your pin code make sure you got your recovery phrase that's simple and then obviously installing the devices it's all here for you You don't have to panic too much people do flap they do messaging me going how do i do it well go to the website go to the support side and literally follow the videos other elements as well as i mentioned before that 24 code phrase if you have problems with this there's a whole level here of how to set up your device and also restore from recovery so if if you are trying to recover this so say for example your dog at it um as a simple phrase you know when you're doing it and step by step you go restore from recovery so then you, you basically copy the instructions you'll choose your new pin code where you want to start off and you enter the recovery phrase that you've got it will tell you from suggested words enter the recovery phrase so choosing both buttons yeah happy days do it enter the first letters of word one by selecting them with left or right so you repeat the process of exactly what your recovery phrase was so that was what you've written down as you can see here security thieves ledger does not keep a backup of your 24 words you are the entire you're the holder so it will give you refresh words that they'll use in their algorithm which will obviously once you got through the 24 combinations of each one you will then get access if you've correctly wrote them down in the correct order if you write them down in the wrong order you're kind of snookered in one way as well as it says here if it's incorrect you need to make sure that all all correctly and you can see here these are all the words as i mentioned before these are all the words that will randomly spit themselves out at you okay there's loads of them so they're all random words so just to give you an idea of what words they are you probably weren't thinking too straight before in terms of what words i was making up but they are random so that's that same again with trezor same sort of situation you know if you want to do it offline online whatever again similar sort of ilk to find out what is kind of stored on it but for me personally my overall opinion i prefer ledger more because it has much more in terms of compatibility with other third parties 
and it's a much e I think it's much easier to use. I've, I've tested one of these. I wasn't really the biggest fan when I first started out, and I prefer using a ledger. Uh, for me, personal opinion. With all this, though, as I say, though, it's the same sort of ilk. If you are struggling and you don't know what you're doing, just simply go on to, you know, the website. It will tell you everything. Go on to the wiki, for example, what I've just been on before. It will tell you exactly how to do it. Use a manual. Happy days. How to use it. How to recovery. How to s s wipe it. Whatever. It's very, very straightforward. Obviously, I mentioned before my Ether wallet. This is for old school sort of Ethereum transactions. If you've got stuff that isn't on Ledger Live and it is an ERC20 token, you can jump it on there. Another one is obviously Trust Wallet. This is Binance, basically. Binance run this one. It's not on their exchange, obviously, but it's a private wallet, but it's more mobile based. Personally, not the biggest fan of mobiles because if you lose your phone, you lose your money. So just be careful with that. You've got to make sure you've got those keys at hand and you can instantly wipe it as soon as you lose your phone. I never carry crypto on my phone. It's too dangerous. And hot wallets so everything else i've just gone through is cold storage offline you've got the keys to them this is hot so coinbase binance qcoin anything that is earning you a yield basically likes of celsius whatever they're all hot they can get hacked very very easily so i hope that does explain some stuff obviously you're setting up a wallet and kind of some sort of processes that you go through Anything that I tell you to write down and keep note of, do it. Because if you don't, you're going to lose your money. Simple as that. With a ledger for recovery, it's very straightforward. If you have a problem, even if you're setting up as a new device, it's obvious, just click new device. If you're looking for a, you know, it's an existing device, you need to recover your ledger live. Follow the instructions. It is very straightforward. But the easiest part is... Long as you've got those seed numbers, you're absolutely golden. Keep them incredibly safe. 